Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today I want to do a book review. Now I've never done a book review on this channel before and I'm sure it won't become a regular feature. However, this book really deserves its own video. So which book am I talking about? I'm talking about this one, Unix, A History and a Memoir by Brian Kernighan. So if you wanna find out more, please well, let me explain. The title of the book, of course, is Unix, A History and a Memoir, and this is what Brian Kernighan writes on the back here. This book is part history and part memoir. It tells the story of the origin of Unix, explaining what Unix is, how it came about, and why it matters. And that's absolutely all true. That is a good summary of the book. However, having read it from cover to cover, I would say it's more memoir than history. Now, why do I say that? Basically, of course, this is uh, Brian's remembrance of all those events from the late 60s onwards. And of course, it's very much from his point of view because he was there in the thick of it, in the middle of it all. So a lot of it is to do with who occupied which office and who was the leader of what department and when such and such a person joined. And now these are all significant people. These are all important people and they are really interesting things. But it's not a kind of a like, and then we added this new C compiler function and then we added this new uh, you know, ability for the file system and then it's much more about the place, the environment, the people and how that was a kind of a, a breeding ground for the ideas that led to Unix and ultimately today of course to what we have in Mac OS, in Linux itself, in of course Android, FreeBSD, NetBSD and so many other things that have been touched by what Unix uh, is. Now, if you're the kind of person who likes to go to computer history museums or to see things about retro technology, how we got to where we are today, then this book will be a great read. If you're more interested in what's coming tomorrow, where we, you know, how things are going to change, how's this going to battery going to make my life better, how's this faster process going to make my life better, then you might find this a bit dry. But if you'd like to know the origins of so much of the technology we use today that's come from Unix, then this is really worth reading. Now, it does deal a lot with the people that are involved. So obviously it gives biographies of all of the key players, including of course, Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson. Of course, it's written by Kernighan himself. And there are lots of other famous names mentioned in here, and they each get kind of their own little few pages to talk about where they came from, when they joined Bell Labs, what impact and sort of input they had into the Unix development. So what I'd like to do is to read some sections of the book that really will give you kind of an idea of the kind of things that uh, Brian is writing about and to kind of give you an idea of his writing style and kind of the coverage that we get. So let's, let's dive into a few of these quotes. Now the first one I really like here is nothing to do with Unix at all. It's just to do with how you can work in an office space. And I wholeheartedly agree with what Brian writes here. I have spent enough time in open plan work areas to know that for me at least, they are utterly destructive of concentration. And that's absolutely true. All the open plan offices I've worked in, they utterly destroy your concentration. And I know it's, it's what people like to do. It's meant to be the, the modern way of doing it. And it has been for, for many, many years now, for decades. But it really is hard to concentrate in open plan uh, areas. And that is just a truth. Now here's an interesting one. When a program in Unix uh, has a segmentation fault, that means it tries to access memory it shouldn't access, it will create a file called the core file, and it's called a core dump. And you can actually apply the debugger to that core dump because it will tell you the state of the memory. It's a kind of a copy of the memory at the moment that the program went wrong. You can go back and have a look to see why it went wrong. And what I didn't know is that that word core comes from the fact that actually a way back when the cores of memory were actually ferrite cores kind of magnetized that get switched on and off. And these were very, very delicate and they were built in little grids, little arrays. And when uh, these magnetic cores were used for storing memory, this is way before we had you know, RAM chips like we have today, then of course it was a core dump because it would dump the contents of the cores. And I, I didn't know that, I should have known that I reckon, but I didn't know that. When a program failed bad enough, the operating system would notice and try to help the programmer by producing a file of the contents of main memory, which was in the magnetic cores, from which comes the phrase core dump. Still used, 
Though magnetic cores long ago left the scene, the file is still called core. And that's absolutely true. Even on Linux today, you will get core dumps. Now, there's also a story in here about how pipes and redirection came about. I won't spoil it because it really is an interesting read. However, let me tell you about the uh, Ken's reaction. Ken then added the pipe mechanism to the shell, tried it out and called the result mind blowing. And of course, today on the command line on you know, Mac OS, Linux, FreeBSD, whatever, uh, pipes and redirection are a fundamental way of how we work on the uh, command line. And there's a story in here about how it all came about. Worth reading if the history of that interests you. Now, there's an interesting story in here about how Stephen Bourne wrote the original Bourne shell that is really the kind of the ancestor of all the shells that we use today on Linux and FreeBSD and so on. And at the time, it says here that Steve was uh, familiar with Algol 68. So let me just read what it says here. The flow control syntax of the new shell was unusual. Since it was based on Algol 68, a language favoured by Steve, though not many others. For example, Algol 68 used reverse words as terminators, like fi to terminate if, if. So it's fi was the opposite to if. And uh, esac to terminate a case, it's case backwards. But since od was already taken for the octal dump command, do was terminated by done. So now you know why, if you're doing shell programming, why the if is terminated by an fi, why case is terminated by the opposite, and why um, the do command is actually terminated by done and not by od. Now before I read any others, this is really the point of this book. It's interesting in its ensemble about the history of Unix, but also the little gems in here really are eye-openers. And some of these things maybe I should have known, but the one when you read something in here that you didn't know, it really is like, a, oh, that, that's why I, I understand now. And I, that, I, I enjoy that. That brings me kind of a bit of delight as I read those. Now, one little thing to mention, and I didn't know this, and this really is embarrassing, but of course there is the ORC uh, scripting language uh, that really is for processing files and text inside of files. And what I didn't know was it's named after the authors and that the K of the ORC is actually Kernighan himself. I should have known that, but actually uh, the K of ORC is for Kernighan. And he talked a little bit about here, about how that language was developed. So if you're interested in ORC and its history, here is a good place. In fact, I've never done a tutorial on ORC here on the channel. If you'd like a tutorial on ORC, then, then do tell me and maybe we'll we can put one together because it really is a, an incredibly powerful tool. Okay, so that's really my kind of brief flick through this book. Let me just say a couple of things. I've got the printed version, and the reason I've got the printed version is that I bought the Kindle version, but the Kindle version is literally a kind of a replica of this book. It's not an actual proper ebook, which means it doesn't work on a normal Kindle. You can read it on a phone or on a tablet, but it's more like reading a PDF document. You, it, the text doesn't flow when you turn, you know, change the font. You only get one page as it is here. So page 57 in here is page 57 on that. And you have to zoom it, pinch zoom with your fingers to read it. And so it was really re horrible reading experience. So that's why I bought the physical copy. So watch that if you want to get hold of this. At the time of making this, the ebook version is not worth getting. You're going to have to get a paper version, which I don't normally like doing, but it really was worth it in the end to read this. Okay, so there you have it, Brian Kernighan's book, Unix, A History and a Memoir. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.